Today we remember a legend. You don't throw around that term lightly, but when, when it's talking about Rick Jenneret, that is the perfect way of explaining him. Hello, everybody. We are sorry that we are joining you under these circumstances, but today we are remembering the legacy and the life of longtime Buffalo Sabres play-by-play -play announcer Rick Jenneret. He passed away last evening, surrounded by friends and family. He was 81 years old. I'm sports director Matt Bove, joined by 7 News anchor Jeff Russo. Jeff has worked in this market for a long time, covered the Sabres for a long time. I am born and raised in Buffalo, Western New York. I adored Rick Janaret as a kid. He was an idol for me and for so many other people. And today we just want to share our favorite memories about Rick, some of our favorite moments, some of our favorite calls. We know there are a lot of them. The news hits hard, Jeff. This was a tough one to see last night for people to wake up to this morning. He was beloved by so many. He was beloved by so many. And, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you – he was, a, you know, as synonymous to the Buffalo Sabres as blue and gold, right? A gentleman who, um, you know, was in the booth in one way or another for more than 50 years. You think back of the incredible stretches that this team has had along the way, and you think of, of Rick Jenneret, a, a man that – um, not only was celebrated for his voice, but also I think his approach to life, his kindness, um, his his unwilling ability to uh, step out of himself at any time and find time for everyone, for the fans, for charity, right, for um, the community at large here in Western New York. He he loved the Sabers dearly. He loved the fans dearly. Uh, and I know Matt, you you know you spoke with him. Um, when they were getting ready to celebrate his incredible career at RJ night. And, and what a wonderful night that they, that he was able to, you know, to, to take that in, to feel that love from the fans uh, for how much that he meant, not only to this organization, but the city. It's a, it's a tough morning, but I think there are a lot of people and we invite you to do the same, to share your memories of, you know, even a, a, a brief moment that you shared with him or, or your favorite moments along the way. He was a, uh, legendary stop short right of of what he meant to this community and the sabers organization as well i mean here's the comment from debbie he was the best watch him call games in the 70s prayers for his family debbie we echo those comments rest in peace rick that's from mark he was one of a kind i think the best way i can explain rick jenneret was he bridged the gap between the team and the fan base and that's why the relationship was just so strong and so organic and real rick made you want to love the sabers even more and he made those moments that much more special rj night there was not a dry eye in the entire building i was there to cover it for work but i actually wanted to be there in the crowd after our six o'clock newscast so after the six o'clock newscast had ended i went and i sat with some of our friends and we sat there it just sent a chill down your spine because for me i think i probably realized at a pretty early age i was never going to be the guy who was actually on the ice playing but i wanted to do something where i was involved in sports and rick was the motivation rick was the hero he was the person that you looked up to my mom tells me stories i guess i used to stand on the fireplace and mm -hmm. announce play-by-play -play for sabers games when i was a little kid and i would try and do my best impersonation of rick jenneret he scores and like <laughs> loses mind you know but he, he was the best i got to know him a little bit over the years listen a lot of people have met rj over the years but sitting there walking in the press box and him just saying hi matt was mm -hmm. so incredibly flattering for somebody who was a young broadcaster because it made me feel like he knew who i was and when your heroes know who you are that's kind of cool they say all the time, don't meet your heroes because sometimes they'll disappoint you. Well, yeah. RJ was the exact opposite of that. I met him and he could not have been more gracious with his time. And I know I'm not alone there. So yeah. many people have run into RJ over the years at events for the Sabres, at the grocery store, out to dinner, whatever it is. And I know he was always very, very gracious with his time. So he's the best. We will miss him dearly. But at the same time, his legacy will live on forever and ever. When you think yeah. of the Sabres, you think of his voice. I know for some people that's Ted Darling. So you have Ted Darling, you have Rick Jenneret. And then for the Bills, you know, I, I think of Van and I think of Murph. You know, those are the names that immediately come to mind when you talk about Buffalo sports and the incredible broadcasters that we've had. You know, we are very fortunate that those are the people who are the soundtracks to all of our favorite sports memories. Yeah. And, you know, the, the <laughs> you could play an hour's worth of his calls, right? And I've, I've oh, enjoyed yeah. listening to both what we've put together here and also on the radio this morning, people share their memories, but I think you've hit it on the nose, Matt, is um, it's a celebration of not only his legendary career, but the type of person he was. I remember when I came to Buffalo in Channel 7 in 03, 
and covered the Sabres for that time, I was just as excited to meet and interview Rick Jenneret as I was of any of the players during that time. And if, you know, we're trying to gather some thoughts today, and I know we're going to be speaking to some former players. I think they'll tell you he was just as big of, you know, a part of the team. He was, he was larger than life. He was, he demanded attention in crowds just like a Ryan Miller would, or, you know, Rick Jenneret was, um, <laughs> he, he was such a, such a huge figure uh, and still will always be, um, you know, just at the core of the heart and soul of the Buffalo Sabres. But uh, you're right. He was so, he, just a humble guy, right? The, he would, remember Matt, the, the Sabres would do different, you know, skits and things along the way, their PR, and you would see, you know, him dressed up, uh, was it as, <laughs> yeah. as, you know, as a Frankenstein? As a Frankenstein. Yeah. 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 I mean, he that's put on the, the type wig of, and flipped yeah, his that's, hair back and forth. That's like, Santa, yeah, I mean, right right, Santa, see, that's the type of guy he was. And I was reading a quote from you. Um, I, I think it was surrounding RJ Knight, just about um, how much the fans meant to him, right? His, he said the fans, uh, in some capacity, were essentially his life, that he lived for the fans. He lived for the buzz in that arena. Um, and, and that's who, you know, that's who he was. And you'll hear that a million times today. Um, and it, it, it just holds true. It just holds true. He's just an incredible guy. I remember we had a news reporter who used to work with us and we had a one-on-one -on -one interview set up with Rick Jenneret and he found out we were doing the interview and he's from Rochester, that news reporter. And he was like, Oh my gosh, can I come? Like, I, I need to meet him. Like I need to be able to have a conversation with him. And I was like, yeah, you can come along. And of course, Rick took a picture with him and he showed him around in the broadcast booth where he called so many games. I remember Rick made a joke about how many people have been up there in the broadcast booth. Cause it was always something that was auctioned off for charity or something. And he was like, like, yeah, I think everybody in Western New York has been up here at some point with me sitting here. I remember when the fan sent him a new pillow to sit on because somebody stole his pillow from the right. press box. You know, the stories are endless. I, I said earlier today, you could watch RJ highlights and calls for the entire day, and there would still be some that you miss. What I was, quite frankly, what I was doing before we got on here was watching old games on YouTube and hearing his calls because mm -hmm. to me, that was the peak of being a sports fan, you know, growing up in Western New York during those years, the bills weren't very good. The mm -hmm. Sabres were really good. Mm -hmm. And he gave you a reason to be excited. And at that point, you know, I'm in middle school and early in high school. That was the best time to be a sports fan. And all of those favorite moments that I have, he was on the call for. So, you know, it's immediately nostalgic. It brings back so many memories for me and for so many other people. Yeah. And I want to, you know, and we've talked about this. We know the Sabres are slowly, um, you know, sharing their thoughts, right? Um, celebrating RJ on this, this somber day. Uh, a photographer of ours just, just got this outside uh, the arena right now, Matt, is uh, a big RJ uh, yeah. posted right there today as the memories continue to to come in for him. You know, I think back to, uh, you know, the, the incredible stretch, 06, 07, right? Uh, the, the calls in that in that season alone, right, will will live on uh, forever. Whether that was the the Pominville shorthander in uh, oh. in Ottawa, which you know I was in the tunnel for, and I didn't hear the call till after. But what an incredible call, all the way to yeah, right here. I mean, this is my favorite. I love this call so much. I It it still brings chills, uh, right? I I was yeah. in the tunnel. I was in the tunnel because that was overtime. Where you know he had to be down out of the press box to try and gather sound. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't hear the call, but I you know in my and I think back. I'm like, did I hear that call? Uh, because it was such a such a defining moment for that team. No one was more excited, right, that the Sabers had upset Ottawa than Rick Jenneret. I mean, oh. <laughs> but uh, he was so excited, and it, you know, to play off of that, the excitement of that, the excitement of that run, and everything in between, all the way to you know the sadness and disappointment in the way that season ended in Carolina. Rick Jenneret just it was the the you know the storyline of you know the soundtrack of that incredible run and. Boy, it still brings you. It still brings chills all these years later, and it, it you know it, because it came from RJ. I think that that stands out even more.
I remember sitting there before his RJ night and doing an interview with him and talking about the relationships that he's had with some of the players over the year. And Ryan Miller was pretty high on the list of people who he formed a friendship with. And we talk about that series that they lost after Ottawa to Carolina. And I remember RJ telling me a story of him going down to the locker room and seeing Ryan after they lost and they just sat there and cried. And he's like, they just sat there and cried together and took it in and was like, this was just such an incredible run. But for it to end like this was so hard for so many people. I just think back to there's so many calls that everybody's going to kind of immediately think to. But for me, it's not even sometimes the calls. It's flashing back to where I was at that point in time when the calls happened. So I remember where I was for the Pommetville overtime winner. You were in the tunnel. I was in a hotel lobby for my cousin's graduation with my entire family. And it was really late at night. So we're like pumping our hands up and down, trying to not to make too much noise because it was an overtime and it was late. I remember the Sabres brawl against Ottawa. I I was sitting on the Ottoman right in front of the television with my dad in the room. And we were just our jaws dropped as we watched all of it. And RJ is just going off. I mean, Lindy Ruff and Murray are screaming at each other. And RJ's telling Rob Ray to cover the mic because they're swearing at each other. And, and Yeah. And Peters is fighting Emery. And just, oh, my it was God. Just... Don't go after our blank captain. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like some of the moments. And those moments were elevated because yeah. of him. It wasn't yeah. just, okay, this is hockey. You know. A great broadcaster, I think, brings those moments and makes them sing. And he did that, whether it was the third week of the season in an overtime game Mm -hmm. against the Devils on a Tuesday night, or it was game seven of the playoffs and there was a game deciding goal. I mean, I think if you polled 100 Sabres fans and asked them, what is your favorite RJ call? Most would have one answer. But there would be a lot of variety there. The mm-hmm. most that would, you know, people would say would be the one we're about to play for you right now, and that's Mayday, Brad yeah. May in the playoffs. And that one to is left just... Montaigne, he gets tripped up, gets it to May, and over the line. Here's May going in on goal. He should be <laughs> As a broad as a broadcaster, you 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 could have put fifty other broadcasters in that same spot, and they wouldn't have had that call. You know what I mean, Matt? Like, I mean, there is to come up with that. (laughs) Just unbelievable! Just unbelievable! He was so good. You think of. I had the conversation with them and a lot of people have joked before, like, how did you know what to say? How did you know when to stop saying Mayday? And he told me, he's like, I stopped saying Mayday when I could think of something else to say and know <laughs> it was not planned because Brad yeah. May hadn't scored a goal in 18 games before right, that yeah. series. So there right. was no way I was preparing for Brad May to be the guy that won the Sabres that series and moved him on to the next round. So yeah. he was just so good off of the cuff and he just made the moments that much more special. You know, I see some of the comments coming in Nance says he was the best, of course. Christina says one guy I I regret never meeting. John says, you know, let's go out and win the cup for RJ this year. I know that that team built a special connection with him because of RJ night two seasons ago. That was the most fun it has been to be in that building since those glory days, since Mm -hmm. 2010, 2011, 05, 06, 06, 07, the years when they were in the playoffs. That was the most fun night in the building since the years that they were making the playoffs. And um, I know there'll be a little bit of extra motivation now, and there should be because he was a legend and people will love him forever. And I think, uh, you know, is is there's been tears, right, throughout the day just because of what he meant uh, to this organization, to the sport, uh, to the city of Buffalo, to Western yeah. New York, to all Sabres fans. But I... I, I, I get this sense today that just like right now, you're getting s- some smiles, right? Just so yes. happy that we had a chance to share, you know, who will go down as one of the, you know, most incredible broadcasters of, of generations, uh, just to have him and know that how much he cared about, you know, each fan and know how much he cared about this organization and, and the city. I think that goes a long way today, just being like, wow, we had a chance to get to know Rick Jenneret. We had a chance to 
to listen to this incredibly talented, wonderful human being. And uh, I think that goes a long way today on, on the toughest of days. I want to talking about a guy, you know, a guy that meant so much. This is an incredible loss for his family, for his friends, for the people who loved him, for the people that he was closest with. But I do think today, and this is easy to say, I guess, from the outside, but today should be a celebration because he was such an incredible person and made so many people's lives better. And, and I appreciate that as somebody who was a fan during the glory years of those seasons. And I just remember how much that meant to me. That was peak fandom. That was the most fun I have ever had as a sports fan. And I know for a lot of people, they have different moments that they can point back to. It could be the late nineties when they went to the cup. It could be the early nineties when they had a little bit of momentum. It could be the early years when they were in the odd and he was, you know, calling the French connection games. Everybody can flash back to a Rick Jenneret moment, to a Rick Jenneret call. And I think that is the sign of somebody who truly made a difference. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers to those who loved yes. him, to his family, to his friends. But at the same time, today should be a day where we remember somebody who is such an icon locally and not just locally. Hockey fans all around the country, especially in the Northeast and Southern Ontario, know exactly who Rick Jenneret is. I mean, the guy's a Hall of Famer. He was yeah. inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2012. That does not happen for a lot of people. Guy's in the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. He's in the Sabres Hall of Fame. He's in the Rafters at the arena. He's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Like, you want to talk about an impressive resume? RJ has it. Oh, no, there's no question about it. And you know what's incredible about that, you know, him getting into the Hall of Fame? Not only did he overwhelmingly deserve that as at the top of his profession, but you wouldn't find he was so humble. He was so humble about, you know, that, you know, that that recognition about going into the hall amongst the, you know, the greats of the game, the great, you know, some of the greatest that have ever been involved. Uh, he just he just was so you could tell he just took in the moment, uh, extremely humbled by um, that recognition. And look at these look at these guys. Him and Jim uh, Lawrence. <laughs> oh, Lawrence was so great. There's the shot with the wig on the kiss cam. He does the little <laughs> hair flip right here. Yep. Yeah. It's just one of a kind. One absolutely one of a kind. Just, I mean, he knew just... he knew how to be an entertainer. He knew how to make television. <laughs> he knew how to make it fun for people. You know, there's 82 games in a hockey season. Oh, the Looney Tunes. That's the best. <laughs> 82 games in a hockey season. Every once in a while, you got to have a little bit of fun. And I think right. he and Jim knew that, especially him and Rob knew that towards the end of his career. He was with Harry Neal for a little while. Mm -hmm. there's other people that are involved in there too, but yeah, he, uh, we are all better and lucky as hockey fans and as sports fans, because we got to experience RJ and we got to live through that. One of the calls that I think about, I've thought about a lot today. I think DJ has it queued up is his save uh, Ryan Miller save against the Bruins. This one was bananas. Savar I think we have that clip. Let's Savar watch this. Pass to Murray, back to Savar again. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> the best. just just the and we'll miss him, right? I we yeah. we will all we will all miss him. I know, uh, you know, when you think of his family today, like you said, Matt. You think of his 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 close friends. You think of the organization and the loss this is. We will miss him and be you know he'll be held in such high regard for for so long. And uh, what a legend! I I you know I I I. I I have a hard time saying that because I don't even think that does it justice. Just what I, a, I, you know, I got to find a better word for that. But um, legendary, I think, stops short of, of what he meant uh, to the profession and to the sport and to this community. And uh, Some, we loved him. We loved him. We're, and we're going to miss him. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And I just thank him for making the memories that much more special. I thank him for making those years just that much more enjoyable. And, you know, this is a tough day for a lot of people. But we are so, so, so fortunate that he was mm -hmm. the voice of the Sabres for as long as he was. More than 50 years. That's impressive. Longest tenured play-by-play -play announcer in the NHL. And they sent him off in style with RJ Knight. Yeah. His banner will forever be hanging in the rafters at the arena. 
people are going to be thinking about him constantly. I still, even though, you know, they haven't had a lot of great memories the last couple of years, I still think back to those. Every once in a while, if I'm in a funk, you'll go back and watch 0506 playoff highlights on YouTube just to get you out of the funk. Something that I do pretty frequently, probably more than I should admit to doing. Uh, yeah. I haven't stopped crying, passing on my birthday, watching a lot of videos since last night. I'm heartbroken. That's, That's for Mandy. Hey, That's you, a tough day. It's a tough day for a lot of people. I mean, he was the voice for so many of us, especially people, you know, for my generation, I'm 30. For my generation, it's you had those peak years in the 05, 06, 06, 07, that era. But I'm 30. You know, he called games 20 years longer than I have been alive, 21 right. years longer than I have been alive. So for some people who are around that age, that's the only voice they've known. Maybe they remember Ted Darling a little bit, but, you know, the best that ever broadcast Sabres games and will truly be missed. RIP and his legacy will live on forever. That's from Ray Rusty. I agree. I agree. His legacy yeah. will live on forever. I, I like how you said it, Jeff, that legacy almost feels like it doesn't do it justice, but mm -hmm. he is, or excuse me, you said legend almost feels like it doesn't do it justice. I'm going to brainstorm today. What word? Yeah, we can same. Use because same. I don't know how to I, he, icon legend, whatever you want to call them there. They are all right. warranted for him. Well, we are certainly going to be taking our time today to remember and celebrate Rick Jenneret um, in, in the best way that we know how. Uh, that will include many of your comments, uh, many of you sharing your memories over the, you know, over the day, and we'll be sure to uh, get reaction from you know the people that knew him best, right? The players, uh, the coaches, the organization, and of course the fans, and we'll be sharing that with you throughout the day uh, on Seven News. So uh, we appreciate. Hey DJ, can we listen to us. Pominville one more time? One more that time. That just makes me so happy, this play. That just takes <laughs> me back to style. Thank Pumminville you. Into Ottawa territory. Pumminville goes around Alfredson. Cuts in front. Scores! Jason Pumminville. Short-handed. Oh, now do you believe? Now do you believe? These guys are good. Scary good. And they are going to either Carolina or New Jersey. The Buffalo Sabres senators in overtime oh, somebody as good andy as it put, gets andy i've been watching him since 93 my favorite goal Derek plant ot game seven ottawa uh the legion of doom call there's that one there's curtis brown makes a mad dash down the ice there's the wounded duck obviously we've talked about pominville and mayday and all those other ones um yeah, I'm going to spend the rest of the day, I think, on YouTube watching highlights of the okay. Sabres from those years. And I know a lot of people will be doing the same. So we uh, thank you for joining us this morning and just kind of honoring Rick and having this conversation with us. We know that this is going to be something we obviously continue to follow for the remainder of the day. And I know he meant so much to so many people. Jeff is going to be talking to people who knew him best, to some former players, to people in the community. And uh, yeah, we'll have much more throughout the day on our newscasts and on our website. But um, we are all better because of RJ. We will miss him dearly. We love him. And um, we thank him for the incredible memories. So I thank do. you for watching with us this morning. And uh, yeah, let's remember RJ today the best we can. For Jeff, I'm Matt, and we'll talk to you guys soon.